305. Okay. This is Spirit Sherpa track ID SS04202023001, episode number 305, Interpersonal Energy Downloads. Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new to this type of work, we suggest you start with episode one and move your way forward from there. Each episode builds on the last and you'll have a solid foundation of the spiritual world by the time you get to the end. And a solid understanding too. If you're further along in your journey, then start at episode 98. And if you're ready to step into being a spiritual spiritual practitioner or teacher yourself then episode 200 is the best place to start wherever you are in your journey we're here to help guide you to the next level with me as always to share her insights and wisdom is the spirit doctor kelly sparta hey kelly how's your day going hey jules uh, that's it's it's okay <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's okay that was hitting. not confident <laughs> well okay so here's the thing right is that last few days i despite getting plenty of sleep despite taking plenty of downtime i keep running into the wall and you know i get, keep hitting the energetic wall where i'll be wide awake and then it's suddenly i i need to sleep right now right oh my god that's me and, too <laughs> yeah and so you know it, and if you guys are hearing this you may you may have the same experience because and i'm going to remind you why OK, the in an earlier episode, God help me, which one? I have no idea. But in an earlier episode, we talked about installing an energetic cutoff, a switch off. Right. So that when you got to a certain percentage of your energy, you would know that you were exceeding that capacity of, you know, I usually tell people start at 25 percent, work up to 50 or 75. And and then, you know, then when you go from wide awake to suddenly I have to sleep right now you know that you've hit your cutoff. And so I moved mine up to, I think, 75 a while ago. And so I have been hitting it hard in the last few days. Um, and Jules, you're probably having the same experience. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. You're, you're definitely hitting, hitting the same thing. So the answer is not to reduce the level of the percentage. <laughs> that is not the answer. I hear you guys thinking that. That is not the answer. The answer is to take more downtime, to acknowledge that, you know, there's just a lot going on in the ethers right now. As we're recording this, it is April 20th, which is, uh, you know, we're, we're going through a solar eclipse right now. We're going through a new moon right now. Moon. Everybody on TikTok is all out there going, wow, this is a manifestation moon, blah, 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 right? So all of that shit's going down. And Mercury and retrograde. A lot going. Oh, yeah. Mercury retrograde starts in a couple of days. Yeah. All of this stuff as at the time of this recording. So not a big surprise if you're feeling a little overdone. OK. So with that said, um, one of the things that's had me feeling a little overdone is the brand shift that we're working on and uh, planning some new retreats. And so we had a different topic that we were going to talk about for this episode today. And uh, Jules and I started talking about the retreats and what they were going to be about and all of that. And, and, and suddenly we're talking about some different things. And she's like, I've never heard of this, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, so we got to make an episode out of this. So we're going to, we're going to go back and have part of that conversation again, and then we'll finish having the conversation. So, uh, you know, I'm looking at doing some retreats here in Panama. I'll be doing, you know, seven day retreats and I've got a few different topics. And the first one I was going to start with is going to be called the quickening. And she's like, well, why would you do that? What's the right? quickening? <laughs> what is that? Why would, why, what would you call that that? And, and I'm like, well, it's actually, it's not just a Highlander thing, right? Because everybody remembers Highlander and the quickening, right? Um, but it's actually from Lynn Andrews' power deck. And there's a card in that deck called the quickening. And it says, uh, if you will look into the eyes of a woman of power, you will catch up with her a little. Okay. And it, it's not the only thing it says, but that's, that's what I'm talking about in this is that 
there is a way in which when you hang out with people who are uh, further along than you in your journey, that there is an energetic connection that's made. And there are encoded downloads that come into your energy field from that energetic connection that just happen. And I was talking to Jewel about this and I was like, you know, I said, this is what I, I'm, I'm convinced that this is the reason why I was able to move so quickly in my journey. Uh, you know, aside from the fact that I basically focused on it and almost nothing else, right? Um, I would hang out with all the elders and all the communities that I was a part of. And when you hang out with the elders, there's shit that happens, you know? There, and, and you're not even conscious of it when, when you're just beginning on the journey. But, like, I remember Abigail Spinner... <laughs> At my okay. very who's, first right, so Abigail Spinner, uh, she is a singer songwriter, and she is, was an elder of the community in Boston, uh, well, in Western Massachusetts. She was an elder in the the Rites of Spring community when I first started in Rites of Spring in like 2000, 1999, 2000, somewhere around there, and. She and her partner, Magnus, who is an actual magician and an illusionist, he actually teaches illusionists, ma illusionist magicians, in uh, Vegas. He, he's, he's got a residency in Vegas out there, or he did, last I checked. Um, the, the two of them would do amazing rituals around the fire at these events. And I remember coming in someplace. I was coming into the room. I, I don't know. Maybe she was working the registration. I don't know. I just, I have this vivid image of her sitting at a table and me standing there and giving her my name. And she goes, who are you? And I, 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 I gave her my name again. And she's like, yeah, yeah. But who are you? And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. Uh, <laughs> I'm me. And I, I started giving her, you know, what I did for a living and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't say I don't know who I am. <laughs> I just, I say that would have been me going, I don't know. That's what I'm here to figure out. I did not know that that was not a possible response at the time that this was happening. I had to be right. I had to know it was how I established my value and not even knowing who the fuck I was, was not an option. Not right? an option. <laughs> so I'm fake like, it till you make it. you make it. Damn it. <laughs> and so I, I still vividly remember the feeling of her staring at me and saying, who are you? And I was like, I don't have any way to answer the question. She finally let me off the hook and let me in the room, whatever the hell it was. <laughs> but I just, I, hub -da, hub -da, hub -da, hub -da. <laughs> it was bad, man. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> and so, you know, but, but that moment was, was a crystallization moment for me, right? Because it made it clear to me I had no idea who I was. I didn't know how to answer that question outside of what did I do, right? And it seemed entirely uh, inappropriate as an answer to her question in that context in that moment to say what I did, you know? And more than but likely, she, way, you think she – and she was probably prompted – to just ask you that going, yeah. hey, ask her this and just screw with her, you know? <laughs> Probably not even that. So so let me tell you a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little secret that none of the elders will tell you, right? Okay. Is that it, it, it's rare that we get, like, our guides are in the back of our head saying, oh, say this, right? It literally is they just come into our heads and speak with our mouths. And, you know, sometimes we notice and sometimes we don't. But, oh. you know, or, or sometimes we're just connected in and the question is in the person's energy field and we're just reflecting back to them what's in their field. Right. Okay. So it, it you know, there's, it's never a let's fuck with her. Your guides are never okay. going to say let's fuck with her. Okay. Never. Um, that is not, a, that's, that's a, that's an earth based thing. That is not a guide based thing. Okay. Fair okay. enough. 
So, you know, your guides will say, here's the question she needs to hear. Right? I was going to say, this is what she needs to but, hear. <laughs> which okay. you know, we will interpret as, as, you know, hey, you're fucking with me, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? No. But that's not what they no, I... mean by it, right? <sighs> right. Yeah. So, um, but in, in that moment, I had that crystallization of, oh, shit, I don't know who I am. And that actually likely informed a lot of what happened for me in the years to come. The fact that it is still such a vivid memory for me when we just mm -hmm. discussed that I can't remember what we recorded two weeks ago. <laughs> it's, it's Y'all, it's for real. <laughs> she, she was like, what did we record? I'm like, dude, we talked about the businesses and the basics for the, for the business. And she was like, I don't remember that. I'm like, yeah, remember we referenced this website? Oh. I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, I don't need to know anymore. It's gone. It's real. You know? <laughs> I got it's too much. Real. I got too much. So, but, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was, it's a vivid memory for me. And that's because it of that. A lot. Now, you know, I also spent time with Errol, who was a little nuts. And, you know, she was an elder in the, the voodoo community. And she, she was big into... Uh, you know, she, she just, she was really good at what she did. Right. And I just, I didn't spend time studying with her. I spent time hanging out with her. Right. So, you know, you, you, I'm sure I've told the story about the, uh, the, about her sending everybody out to smudge the Is outside. Is she the one? She's one of my, she's I've never one. met the lady, yes. but I'm like, I love no. this story. Yeah. Yeah. So she's the one who everybody was having their drama on site at, at mm -hmm. Starwood and, and they came to her going, what do we do? What do we do? And she said, do you have smudge? Yes. Smudge the camp. And, and everyone who walked in got that answer. And I looked at her after she send, sent a big group out. And I'm like, why? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's, I'm like, smudging the camp isn't going to do shit. It's outdoors. <laughs> I'm like, you can't smudge the outdoors. <laughs> like, they don't know that. <laughs> She's like, it gets them out of my tent. That's it gets the purpose. Them out of my tent. That's the purpose. It gives the kids something to do. Or, 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 or how, how my mom used to tell me, get out from under my feet. Right. <laughs> Go do something. Basically. Get out from under my feet. Yeah. But she, she was not going to tell them that because they were too in their drama. So she gave them something to do. There some purpose go. to serve. To, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I hung out with her. I hung out with Sue Arthen, who was one of the... Um, higher ups in the, uh, the earth spirit clan. I, I hung out with Kathy and with Ken day and they were the people who were the organizers for Lumens gate and didn't hang out with Ken as much as I hung out with Kathy, but just, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time with a lot of very high end, you know, elders, a lot of people who were, you know, badasses, right? And almost none of it was spent learning something specifically from them. Right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't like I was taking classes with them on a regular basis or anything. But they're... So we're empaths. Okay? So all of the people listening to this podcast, and I could say this pretty universally because almost everybody I've talked to who's li who listens to this podcast identifies this way. We're all empaths, okay? Being an empath means that you are constantly in a state of mixing your energy field with other people. And, you know, we teach you how to manage that, right? <laughs> it's part of right. what we teach you yep. in our first program in the yes. Welcome to the Woo program. But we still choose to do it. I mean, I mix my energy with my husband and he reads my mind all the time, okay, because our energies are mixed, right? And it could be a, <clears throat> a conscious mixing or an unconscious. Right. But until you learn how to do it, until you learn how to manage it, it's unconscious. Okay. But clearly, these elders chose to allow me into their energy fields because what was happening without me consciously realizing it is that when you're in, when you share energies with somebody who's an elder what happens is that you get um little pieces of code 
right? Is the best way to, to think about it. If we're all computer programmers, right? Mm -hmm. Then if you have two computer programs operating on the same server at the same time, doing the same thing together, and they're and think of us as AI, right? They learn from each other, right? Mm -hmm. They they pick up on each other's code. It's like the reason why we learn to, if you spend a lot of time with someone, you start talking like them, you start walking like them, you start using the same inflections. Those are pieces of code that are being downloaded into you by way of that shared experience. The same thing your, happens on your a accent spiritual gets a lot, Your accent gets yeah. a lot worse when you have a husband from yeah. Georgia. <laughs> yeah. So the same thing happens... Uh, from a spiritual perspective on your spiritual knowledge that exists in your beingness. Okay. So we've talked about this before where there are two paths to enlightenment, right? There's the masculine path, which is the heart chakra up where you are understanding and knowing and you're stripping away at the ego and you're trying to let go of stuff and limiting beliefs and all of that stuff, right? That's the masculine path. That's the path of the light, right? It's, it's in the yin yang, it's the white and in, and, and it's the masculine path. So you're stripping away, stripping away, stripping away until you become nothing and you become one with everything. Right. And that's the path of enlightenment from the masculine path. The feminine path is the path of great mystery. It's of experience. It's the darkness. It's the blackness on the yin yang. Right. And so that is the embodied pathway and the embodiment pieces are the piece that they're the more advanced pieces because most people start in the heart chakra up most spiritual practices not all but most spiritual practices are working heart chakra up and so therefore they're more beginner level stuff because it's well that and it's because it's in the head right so when you're in your head you're trying to understand, you're trying to you manage with your head, we control with our head, we're in our mind, we're in our ego, blah, 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 blah. When you can transcend that stuff, you can come into the body and the body wisdom and the body knowingness and the experienced aspect of spirituality, okay? And this experience level of spirituality is a not... I don't want to say it's not conscious because you, you are conscious to it, but you're not processing it with your head. Okay. Okay. It is a beingness state, not a doingness state. Right. So it is, uh, it is a way of being, it is a bringing yourself into alignment with, it is a shifting through the movement of energy. It is a, settling into the 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 moment of the present now the eternal state of now it's a beingness state okay and okay. in that eternal moment of now is the akashic records and everything that has ever been ever will ever could be all the dimensions exist in the one in the now in the experience of the all that is right when you are operating within the experiential state, you know, having removed judgment and embraced compassion and, and uh, letting go of good and evil, which we talked about in transcending mm -hmm. good versus evil, right? Mm -hmm. When you are operating in that space, your beingness is more easily shared and it's not just surface things like my accent is heavier or I say things in this cadence or we okay. talk in this way or we use these words or whatever, right? Though that's the very high, you know, shallow level of how this stuff works. Okay. When you are in the beingness state, it is about uh, being in a, there's a deeper level of it. And bear with me, this is the first time I'm languaging this for people. So if I have to fumble through it, bear with me. Um, and the code that gets exchanged when you share energies with someone else is the, you, you're anchoring, it's like an NLP anchor. So if you've ever taken neuro-linguistic programming and you understand the concept of an anchor, which is to take an experience and anchor it into your memory through a particular thing, right? So like a movement or something like that, right? 
Um, this is a similar sort of concept, except that it's anchoring a state of being into your field through the experience of it in somebody else's field. Because you are an empath and you are experiencing what they're experiencing by the very nature of being an empath. So then it becomes my experience? So it's, it becomes a sense memory that you can then access to create your own version of that experience. Okay. Okay. It's kind of so like I have a mini, uh, uh, there's a set of, you know, because I call you a walking encyclopedia. So <laughs> I, I would have maybe letters A through F. <laughs> then, no, or, or is no, that, that different? would be a head-based thing. That would that be is, a head-based thing. A, okay. That's a head-based thing. That's a knowledge thing. Okay. okay. So you ever have somebody in your life who, when you walk up to them and you, and you, you like hang out with them, they just make you feel better. You just mm -hmm. feel good or you just feel ick, you know, I've there's those two. Yeah. So that is what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. There's um, what you're getting from those people is a sensory experience of either comfort in the feeling good or mm -hmm. feeling loved or feeling welcome or feeling, you know, whatever. Or you're getting the sense of feeling agitated or angry or judged or whatever, yes. right? From, from the other person, right? And so it's, you're, you're feeling the beingness of them. Now, it's not as, it, so I, I shouldn't probably have used the negative one because that a lot of it comes from, you know, somebody's thinking about you and they're judging you and blah, 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 or you're projecting judgment onto them one or the other. But if it's a body experience, it's most mm -hmm. likely that there's something that they're positioning onto you, right? But with the positive experiences, this is where we most often have it. So usually it's like that grandmother energy, right? That's what I was thinking no. of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Most of us associate it with grandmother energy. Whether it's your grandmother or not, it's grandmother energy. It's energy, that, yeah. Oh, come here, baby. Come, yes. come to grandma. Grandma will love you no matter what. She'll give you candy, and mm -hmm. we will love you. And you can just sit here all day, and you can t tell me anything, right? Mm -hmm. There's that sort of, that you know, that's the one visceral sort of uh, anchoring that we all can, can grasp, Mm -hmm. Right. This is that only from a spiritual perspective. It's from a inner peace, stillness, uh, focus, presence, completely um, owning your own space and being sovereign in your beingness. Right. It's it's from that place. And that energy can be translated through energy connection with another person. Can it be translated over the internet? Yeah, not as much. It's harder. It, this sort of thing, because it's an embodied state, is much better in person. Yeah. Because you're embodied with the person. With right? the person. Right. So, um, but that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about with this. And you get that just by hanging out with the elders. Wow. Assuming they'll let you hang out with them, right? Um, but if you do that intentionally, which is what I was talking about with the quickening uh, right. retreat, right? If you do it intentionally, then there is a... Um, then as the person who's doing that, I would you know, open my field and pull people into that space and, and give them an anchor point for that and help them to find it within themselves. And, you know, it's an experiential process, right? And so that is why I wanted to call it the quickening is because that's really what you're doing is you're, you're getting to, we all love to skip steps, right? <laughs> but this, it's not exactly skipping steps, but it's, you and I had this conversation the other day about not trying to get something, right? <laughs> yes, like we trying did. To push the river, right? You're not trying to push the river. Right. You can't push yes. the river. The best no. you can hope for is to go in, pick up your feet and float along with the river and let and, and be in the flow of it, right? Yes. And and you can spend years 
trying to find this state. And in fact, I've met many people who've spent years and years meditating and, you know, they're good at meditating, but they haven't really found a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And that's because they, they have taken, they've, they've focused on something and mastered that something, but that isn't the something that gets them to the place that they are looking for. Right. There's a lot of things that you can master that may or may not get you where you want to go. Right. And yeah, so, sure that. you know, and some of them will get you close. Some of them will get you closer. Right. You know, and some of them are just, you know, things to master that don't necessarily get you anywhere close to what, you know, or anywhere near where you're wanting to go, I should say, because everything gets you closer to something. Right. Right. So, you know, this is about working with people who are further along in their journey, who have done a bunch and are now like, OK, I'm ready to level up and I can't do the beginner stuff anymore because it's not useful to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I, I, I keep trying and I'm not necessarily getting there or I'm trying and I'm getting closer, but it's not really fully there. Or, you know, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm doing pretty okay by myself, but I would love something deeper and more connected and, uh, you know, where I have more access to my sovereign self, to my power, to my purpose, to my beingness, to my, you know, ways of being amazingly uh, impactful on an energetic level in the world. Right. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about energy, interpersonal energetic downloads. Okay. Yeah. What you, when you were talking about that, what, the image that popped into my head was like, say, like an archery and you have a bullseye and what you're where you're trying, wanting to get your purpose and everything is right at that little black bullseye. And you may be hitting around it, but now with the quickening, it's going to hone you in to where you're, you know, shooting the arrow right there. Then you shoot the arrow that splits the arrow that hit the bullseye. Right. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So it's. That's still even too much of a head-based metaphor. Well, but, I, you, yes. hello. Have you met me? I'm in my Same head. Same like, <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is more of a, you know, um, I don't even know how to, how to language this one, but it's, it's, it's kind of like you can't be a little bit pregnant, right? Yep. <laughs> True like that. that. You either are or you're not. Right. You can be so. more pregnant if it's twins or triplets or, you know. <laughs> You're still just pregnant, but you know? you're pregnant. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, the, and this would normally be, if we were doing this as a promotion, this would normally be where we'd say, Oh, well, this is when it's happening. I don't have that answer. I'm literally driving around and looking at venues right now. So, um, you know, but, but we were having this conversation and it was such an interesting, um, literally in the course of having this conversation before we got on to have a, to talk about something else. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, I had the realization that, that that was what was happening and I was just not conscious of it at the time. And the, uh, you know, it's a, it's a new state of being, uh, for me to recognize and acknowledge that. And, uh, and I am confident in my ability to, pass that forward to others at this point in my being in my in my evolution and so you know a lot of this was just about being able to def define it for you guys because you know yeah. it's not something yeah. i've ever heard anybody talk about you know the the quickening card in the in the the power deck was the very first time i've i've heard it referenced in any way and not in this context so, you know, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that one, it was possible and two, what was happening because, you know, when you're early on in your journey and you're working with elders, you know, there's no way to not be impacted. There's a reason they did apprenticeships. Yeah. You know, because you would just spend a lot of time with the elder and you would get a lot of it through osmosis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting something through osmosis means literally through your empath energy your field, path. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, so could, we have language for it. We just don't, don't use it in that way. 
Now, could there be, I don't know what the reason would be, but where or when an elder is doing this, um, it's, it's conscious to where the elder has to open themselves up for it or it's unconscious kind of it happens and the reason I was I was wondering you know you you always want to be respectful to your elders mm -hmm. and all of that right and so if there's an occasion that someone is being disrespectful and trying to get this all this osmosis well I'm just going to kind of like butt in and try and hang out with her but you know doing that and crossing that line right yeah, if you come in that with that energy, any elder worth, worth their salt is going to, like, shove you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you're trying to suck their energy, right? Yeah, you kind of turn into an energy is... vampire, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, the, so to say, is it conscious or not on the part of the elder? So here's the thing, and this is the other thing I said to Jewel earlier, was, um, you know, I still get the benefit of these downloads, when I hang out with other elders who have mastered different parts of life than I have. And wow. so I still get that benefit from hanging out with them. There's a, there's an, an up leveling that happens. There's, it, it, I mean, we see this referenced actually in, um, whenever you talk to somebody about being successful, they'll say that your income is the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yes. Right. That is this, okay? That okay. is, you know, there is a there is a set point that an energetic in the monetary field that is causing that to be the case, right? And so, you know, that's why they say seek out people who are more successful than you are to spend time with them because that way your set point gets raised. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing here, right? So I hang out with like Janine Bolin. Okay, I, I hang out with Janine and she has gone down completely different paths than I have in some places. And she never fails to raise my vibration in some way, shape or form. Okay, and I, she has said the same to me in return because we, we have been in different places and we've done different things and we hold different energies and therefore the, the energetic vibration shift happens, right? So, you know, it, it doesn't stop. Right. So it's just a matter of of making sure that you are in a space where you are open to receive what is available to you, but you are not like trying to pull or demand or right. insinuate yourself or whatever. Right. And so, you know, sometimes it's about like I uh, I'm trying to think of reasons I ended up hanging with these people, um, you know, I would. I, I remember, so I remember going to Daughters of the Earth Gathering. Uh, was it, it might have been Belly and Womb Conference. It was one of Elisa Starkweather's uh, events. And I had come in and, and been a speaker. And I sat down in the kitchen, uh, in the living room, just off the kitchen. And I just sat on the couch because it was, it was comfortable. And everybody, everything else was outside. And all the speakers came and circled in and came and sat down with me. And my friends accused me of holding court. They were like, you held court. I was like, I did what? I just sat on the freaking couch. I was a couch potato all afternoon. Yeah, yeah. You held court. All of the people who I would want to talk to came and sat with you. And I was like, well, I was in the comfy spot. <laughs> and, and I wasn't attached to talking to them. I was just there and they came and talked to me and I was happy to see them. And they sat down and we talked, right? And... And in my head, I was not holding court. I was just hanging out, right? And because I was the one holding the neutral, hanging out energy, I don't, you know, I'm not fangirling or, you know, needing That's to know the, more yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know. Then they would sit down and be like, hey, can I hang with you? And I'm like, yeah, sure. What's going yeah. on? You know, <laughs> like, because I treated them as people, right? Right. And right. not as, you know, guru on high or whatever, because, yeah. You know, unless you were all up in your ego, you do not want to be treated as guru on high, let me tell you, because, you know, that's some shit right there. That's a lot of pressure to have to live into. Yeah. I and, probably you know, needed that break. Yeah. And, and if you're a spiritual teacher, 
you should not be in that guru energy, right? Because that's ego we shit. We talked about that right? before, too. Or yeah. it, may, it may have been you and Joey, but that, that came up on one of your podcasts, too, about the gurus being all up in their ego and what I say yeah. is law and right. nobody else is right. Right. Now, I, n let me be clear. I'm saying this in, in the Western version of guru, not in the Eastern Indian tradition of guru, uh, because that's a very different energy there. And, you know, I, some of them are in that space and some are not. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the Western, you know, I am the great grand poobah of this spiritual tradition and you will follow me and worship me and, and beg to be at my feet. And turn your yeah, power over that to me. That energy. Yes, <laughs> and turn your power over to me. And, and I will savage you if you try and leave me because yes. I need your energy, right? Yeah, no. Yeah. So, no, we're not that, right? Not that. Nobody who's actually on a spiritual path wants to be treated like that. Okay? No, no That one. would be the That's opposite. Way too much work. Way too much work. Way too much responsibility. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Right? That's why I tell people my goal is for you to be perfectly able to do all of this stuff yourself by the time you get done with all my classes. I don't want to be responsible for your ass forever. That's not what I want. <laughs> I want but you to be man. empowered. <laughs> but man, I'm going to live in your basement until I die. <laughs> I live for the empty nest syndrome. <laughs> Because, you know, that's the goal, that's right? It's the goal for you to be able to stand on your own two feet and be powerful and sovereign over yourself where you don't give a shit what I think, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's great. That's exactly where you should be. You are not going to be in a position to help anybody else unless you get there because you're going to be dependent upon their approval and therefore you're going to suck as a spiritual teacher, okay? So, you know, that's my goal. My goal is to, to make people... Uh, not make, that's the wrong word, but to, to give people the tools that they need mm -hmm. and the perspectives that they need to stand on their own two feet and be completely sovereign in their power and in their purpose and to be the spiritual badass that they were meant to be. That's my goal. And then, you know, I'm here as a touchstone to say, Hey, how you doing? And you know, you hit something hard and you come back and you'd be like, I don't know what to do with this. And I'm like, I got you. OK, yeah. but that's it, you know. Yeah. So, you know, this is the thing is that when you're standing in that space where you're not seeking approval, you're not seeking to fangirl or whatever. Right. Fanboy, whatever. Then, you know, it's the, the elders are just hanging out with you because they're hanging out with you. Because they're choosing you know? to. They're just being people with you. Yeah. Right. And that's the answer. If you want to know how to hang out with an elder, if you're at an event, don't treat them like an elder. Be a person with them. You know, not to say that you can't be respectful and whatever mm -hmm. else, because, you know, that's that's relevant. But but treat them like a person. You know, that's that's the people they choose to hang out with. They all love to hang out with people who are them 30 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, and you're all them 30 years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just it. But, you know, if you're, if you're just being you, then, then you're golden. But if you're, you're trying to get something or you're trying to, you know, get somewhere by hanging with them or, you know, be able to say, oh, I hung out with so-and-so, blah, that, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, that's where I was going. Elevate, yeah. then, elevate then my status, quote, quote, yes. quote, air quotes. That's yeah. feeding your ego, which is opposite of what you need to be doing. And it's like, mm -mm, right. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. So hang out with them, be people with them, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, you know, yes, we will be offering these retreats in the future. I don't know when, if you're curious and you want to know, if you want to be informed of when these retreats are happening, there is a space on the website that you can go to. Uh, it's in the events section of the, the website, and you, there's a drop down that says inform of next retreat. And if you click on that uh, and put your email in, um, we will send you an email when the retreat happens. And uh, I'll let you know what's going to, what, what the deal is going to be with that and how that's going to work and so on. So, but uh, yeah, so yeah, be careful who you mix your energy field with. 
There you go. See, I didn't even have to prompt her. She knew what to do and give me a Kellyism. She just poof went there. Why? Because our energies are all mixing. So that's it. <laughs> I just went with it. <laughs> there you go. It's all good. Yeah. So, and we also have the, uh, what is your shadow work readiness score? We have that up there yes. too. Um, yeah, so and a if reminder. You if you're not sure that you're going to be ready for the, the for higher the end stuff, then, then for the retreat, then, you know, check out the quiz and that'll give you an idea of where you should end up in the programs. There you go. All right. Well, that's all that we have for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, everyone. Bye.